Say nice things about Detroit. Yeah, I started that in 1970s, late 70s in Detroit, when Detroit was the murder capital of the world. And I had retail stores downtown Detroit. And like all small entrepreneurs, we're trying to get people to come into the city. And it's Mark Rothling we're talking about, MDC, Golf Channel, boy, ABC before that. But for me, 20 year mentor, 20 year friend, great supporter. As I've been over here in Hawaii, as I got into the broadcast business over here and covering golf, working with the PGA Champions Tour, what a blessing it's been to know you and Debbie. Oh, well, thank you very much, and, <laughs> and same for us. Um, wow, I didn't realize this whole Detroit history for you. I love Detroit. I'm a huge Detroit fan. Uh, of course, I used to go there for the uh, PGA Tour Champions when the senior players was there, but I did a lot of work for Ford Motor Company over the years. Uh, Lincoln Mercury was the title sponsor at our tournament over at Kapalua, and uh, I love Detroit. Uh, actually, Detroit has got some of the best downtown golf uh, of any metropolitan area in America, so forget everything else. Uh, I love the golf in Detroit. Well, and coming up in June is the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Uh, Dan Gilbert, Quicken Loans, is bringing that to Detroit. It's taken him a couple of years to get that spot on the PGA calendar. Back last September, the Ali Challenge, playing up at Warwick Hills, which was the site of the Buick Open for so many years, and so many of these Champion Store players played at the Buick Open back in the day. So they were happy to get back to Flint, Detroit area. Uh, Detroit Foundation Hotel, Mark, you're such an ambassador for Chicago, your hometown. Went to DePaul University, right? I Dan, did. Dan Quayle's roommate, and yeah. <laughs> you played that's the college what he's, That's what he says. I don't um, talk about that so okay. much anymore, but... Um, you know, I, it's interesting, Detroit, um, with the PGA Tour going there, they're also going to Minneapolis this year. Those are two hotbeds of golf that need to have PGA Tour events. And uh, it certainly it's been painful for some PGA Tour events that are falling off the schedule, but frankly, there needed to be some attrition, um, get some new life, and, and going to places like Detroit and Minneapolis, I think is absolutely the right thing for the PGA now, Tour. Now, the very first time a PGA Tour event has been within the city limits of Detroit, going to Detroit Golf Club, a uh, wonderful golf course within the city in the Palmer Park area of downtown Detroit. And with your knowledge of Chicago, I didn't realize that you had so much experience with Detroit and ties to Detroit. So even better, because I really want to, you know, get you more engaged and throughout the year, talking with some of the radio stations there, I had uh, Greg McLaughlin, it, uh, got, had him call into WJR, which you probably know. I've been on that station Paul before. W with I love Paul that, W. Yeah. And uh, Paul W. had said to me, I was having dinner with him before the Ali Challenge, and he said, you know, I haven't heard from anybody about doing interviews. I said, no way. How could you they not have been in touch yet? And I'm thinking it has to do with an age demographic a little bit, you know. So I got a hold of Maureen, and she had Greg call in and other Good. people. But I want to start getting that, that thread going. I'll do it anytime for you, Emily. Thank you so much. And Detroit Foundation is part of a Perium Hotel group, which is out of Chicago. 13 hotels around the country. They've really made a difference in Detroit with their, their boutique hotels. And uh, we're just excited that all of you are bringing golf back to the, back to the Detroit area. Well, cool. I, I, um, some of my fondest memories, uh, first of all, I think Michigan in general is one of the best golf states in America. More golf per capita than anywhere. There, there you go. Yeah. Uh, from the south to the north, the west, um, you know, it seems like we go to Benton Harbor for a KitchenAid uh, seniors more now than we do go to Detroit. I, I'm just glad to be able to go back to Detroit. And uh, I'm really happy for the people of Michigan because they are ardent golf fans. And it was absolutely the right thing to do to go to downtown Detroit. Uh, you're gonna start seeing that more and more on the PGA Tour. They're gonna move the Houston event from 30 miles north, which it's been for years, and it was a great site out there at Golf Club of Houston, but they're going down to Memorial Park next year, downtown in Houston, and I think that's gonna breathe new life into the Houston event, and I think going downtown Detroit is absolutely the right Be decision. able to turn it into a week-long event right. involving the, everybody in the city, whether they're golf enthusiasts or not, but turn them into golf enthusiasts because of all the They will be after the on. week if they're not before. So we're out here at the Mitsubishi Electric Championship, the 23rd year at the beautiful Hualalai Resort, Four Seasons Resort, the, the most popular Four Seasons in the system, the Four Seasons system, and what a blessing, the longest running PGA Tour event at one venue of any on the tour, right? It's amazing. Uh, I guess I've been coming here for, I don't know how many years, more than 20. Um, I love this place. Um, every year it's different. It's funny, you know, it's the same golf course, but boy, this year the wind is 
coming from a completely opposite direction. I don't even recognize any of the holes, and uh, I still recognize the beauty, and I love the Four Seasons, and just everybody that's around here is just so friendly. It's, I can't even believe it's working. I can't, this is my job. I get to come to the Four Seasons. Yeah, well, this morning oh, you I... sent me a text that you're out fishing with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out fishing, uh, you know, you know uh, you, you name it. But I, you guys work hard. I mean, it's, I know you, you make it look fun and you do have fun, but it's a lot of hard work staying on top of it, doing a beautiful job on the broadcast and a lot of changes. You know, over the years, we've talked about different things that you've done out on the course with, with uh, the commentators, a lot of things that you're trying out. But, you know, let's, let's go back to, with your career, Mark. I mean, you played on the Asian tour. You ended up in Maui. Found out you well. You probably knew you had Found an imagination. Found out I wasn't good enough. Yeah. <laughs> but you had an imagination. You know how to think outside the box. Bring some of your ideas to Kapalua, and it, with marketing and residential and real estate, you and Debbie and, and the Kapalua and talk. Go back to that background, and even the part where you ended up uh, pulling the production together so that the Maui Classic, so that those basketball games were televised, which they weren't way back. In the day. There wasn't much going on back then, and so we started the Kapalua Golf Tournament and uh, pretty much started the college basketball. It was a four-team event over a war memorial in Wailuku with no TV, and we moved it to Lahaina and kind of changed the whole dynamic of that. But it was, it was a lot of being in the right place at the right time, and I've been able to utilize those experiences, you know, to, uh, to take me to levels and heights I never thought I would get to. And there were so many people along the way, you know, Arnold Palmer took me under his wing. It was interesting. My dad died when I was 11, very young. Uh, so my mom raised three boys and in some ways Arnold Palmer kind of became a father figure to me and um, really helped me understand uh, how to treat people and deal with people and uh, I, there were just a number of guys like that along the way that really helped me but uh, everything good that's come come in my life has been because I ended up here in Hawaii somehow. Well I remember the very first time I saw how you treat people and that was at the Senior Skins and uh, it, it, so they Senior Skins at the Manalani Resort and you were one of the Pro-Am uh, the celebrities playing the Pro-Am and I remember at the time you said gosh there's Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, uh, Jack Nicholas and people, the guys that had to play with me, but you know what? They loved playing with you, right? And well, people <laughs> saw how much they, they loved playing with you, how fun you were. You know, you were doing some commentating, I think, at the time for ABC. I, I was. I was working the Skins game, and uh, so, they, yeah, they added two players to the field, to, to Arnold, Jack, Gary, and might have been Trevino that year, I think. And, um, and my team actually won the Pro-Am. I remember because Governor Cayetano at the time was on the team. Uh, I think he was the governor then, or maybe yeah. maybe lieutenant governor. But um, yeah, those Montalani days, boy, I miss them. Somebody start up the senior skins again. How about you, Emily? That was a wonderful, wonderful offer. Well, it may happen with Patrick Fitzgerald, who's the CEO out here at the Four Seasons Resort, now being the head and president of uh, the new company that's taken over Montalani Resort. I saw Patrick yesterday. He said they're really excited about a $100 million renovation they're doing. So who knows? You know, he knows the value of having an event at a venue like this. He's not a talker, he's a doer. That's he is what a I doer. Like I love Pat Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how great, like I told him yesterday, it's so great that a local person is doing what they're doing at Montalani Resort. I agree. And we're getting that local touch to it. But, you know, you, you go back to those days of the Kapalua, you know, it was analog TV. I know that Kelly Fleer, the tournament manager here, was telling me about how you got the vans or the trailers or the production crew to come over to Maui to broadcast the basketball. People forget that in those days, there weren't TV crews all around Hawaii. No, there was nothing in Hawaii. And uh, yeah, we dropped the mobile unit at the harbor one day. It only fell about an inch, but a $5 million piece of equipment falling an inch was a, a serious enough issue. But it all worked out somehow, and here we are still doing it. And, you know, knock on wood, uh, at least a few more years. So it's Mark Rothing. We're going to hear a lot more about him in relation to uh, Detroit and the saying nice things about Detroit and weaving them in with the Alley Challenge, the, the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Typical of what Mark is like. We were going to meet this morning. He sent me a text. He, all morning he's been so kind to like stay in touch. He just sent me a text. We're starting early. I can meet me up at the door of the broadcast booth. I've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to say thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Emily. As My always, pleasure as always. It's, Anytime. You know, you've just been so supportive for so many years, and I appreciate it. We'll continue this uh, throughout the year. You got Tying it. into Detroit Foundation Hotel and uh, Charlotte's coming Detroit. to fetch me right now. Okay. We're coming up early, 145.